folks, I'm Nathan with two guys in a ride, and today we are here uh, at the Apple Ford Shakopee. We're at the All Mix uh, Car Show here. I'm here with Bob and and his stunning. Well, what are we looking at here, Bob? 58 Imperial, Southampton. Man, and it's original. All original. I mean, that's just hard to believe when you look at this thing. I mean, the paint, the chrome work. It's absolutely amazing. So, um, how many of these were produced? 1,600. Only 1,600 of yes. them? Yes. And it would have been, at that time, a competitor for Cadillac? And Lincoln. And Lincoln. Correct. So this was this was the top of the line. Correct. I, I should not even say it, but Chrysler. Right? They, I mean, they didn't even put Chrysler nope. on the car. Nope. This, this Correct. Was just, Separate this was, division. This was the Imperial. Yes. How dare you mention Chrysler? Shame <laughs> on me. Okay, so taking a look at the at, you know, at the front, there's so many neat features. You know, first of all, it's just all that beautiful chrome work. But then, you know, what what exactly did they do? You want to know what they called this part here? It looks like an eagle. Well, it... From what I from what I can find out, it was actually taken after an eagle, and it almost looks like, if you look at a T-bird emblem, it looks very similar. And I don't know if maybe Dirk Echo, who designed it, if he had that in mind or not. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, that was my thought coming up to going. Yes. Wow, that looks like a Thunderbird emblem. But yes. that, that's but obviously it says very clearly Imperial Carol, right in correct. the middle of it. And then you've got you know the the the, the fenders where they come out. You know they come correct. out. Correct. And widen, and then you got that beautiful chrome strip coming around, and then the dual headlamps, but all enclosed in one casing. Man, that is beautiful. Can we uh, pop open the hood and take a look at the engine? Sure. Okay, and the engine is also original. Correct. So you have done, you've had not had anything taken apart and rebuilt? Or? Nothing. Man, where did this thing sit? It sat in a private collection for 25 years. <clears throat> Up in northeastern Wisconsin. Okay, and obviously it was in a, in a climate-controlled environment. Correct. And you'll yep. see that on the interior. It's just crazy. Now, uh, we were talking a little bit earlier about the paint because I mean it looks incredible. But how how many mills are left on it? One and a half mills. One and a half mills. So it's getting thin. <laughs> but you know, yes. for its years, I mean, you know, 1958. Wow, absolutely incredible. I mean, even look at the engine. Yes. You know, the, the, the cover yep. on the top of the hood there. Now, how many miles does this have on it? 47,000. 47,000. Holy smoly. All right, what kind of an engine was it? It's the last year for the 392 Imperial, uh, excuse me, Hemi that was used in the Imperial. Okay, so it had the big engine. Correct. Do you have any idea about how much horsepower? 345. 345. Man, yes. that was a lot. Of course, a heavy car, but that was a lot. Uh, did it have a four-barrel carb? Correct. Okay. That's a four-barrel. Wow. It's it's very clean. Yeah. You, I haven't done anything yet. I haven't detailed under here yet. Really? No. Man, <laughs> that that is absolutely amazing. All right. Um, we're going to take a step around to the side here and take a look at some of the items on the site. Okay. So, you know, Bob, what everyone gets their start in cars somewhere. <laughs> yeah. How did you get started in cars? Well... I don't know, back in <clears throat> back in 78, I kind of got interested in a Lincoln Mark V. Okay. So that was the first new car I bought. And I bought it for my wife, and she drove it for about a month, and she couldn't see out the back window if memory has that yeah. back. So I had it paid for, and I thought I'm going to keep it. So from there, I then started, I bought a 66 Impala Caprice okay. convertible. And then from there, I went to a, it was the first year for Miata. Oh, yeah. And then I had Boy, a... that's a change. Oh, yeah. My wife used to say, the bug keeps your bugs off your forehead. <laughs> and I had a, I had a 78 um, Mercedes 350 SL. And then from there, I went to my 59 T-Bird convertible and to this one here. So that's all I've got there. Oh, I also had an 80, uh, uh, 80 Mark VI. Uh, Bill Glass. Wow. So, so you've had a long collection yeah. of cars, maybe one at a time, but they've been, Yeah, yeah. It's fun. The car community is a fun place to yeah. be, and and uh, thank you on behalf of car viewers, no, the people that no. come for bringing a piece of history like this. It's so fun to watch. Now, um, 
Door handles are chrome. This is this would have had uh, power windows or, or manual windows. You could get power windows, but this is manual. Okay, and we'll get around. It's, well, actually, we can talk about it from here. The uh, the transmission on here is push button. Correct. Okay, and then the turn signals were also <laughs> kind of down in the, along down. with those push yeah. buttons. Correct. And it was just a twist. Correct. Up. Yes. We, you know, we've seen that on some earlier Chryslers as well, where it's just, in, you know, for us, is in a weird <laughs> spot. But yes. I like how huge the gauges are. I mean, you didn't have to hunt for your miles no. per hour to know how fast you were going. Uh, you know, or even the auxiliary gauges that are in the uh, gauge on the right. Correct. Um, now, there are two knobs below the steering wheel on the right, and then there's the key. Correct. So what was the first knob for? The first knob is the uh, tripometer and the little knob switch like that is for the remote mirror on the driver's side. Oh, okay. Operates that. Okay, and then of course you have your ignition. Now there's a lever that goes down and up. I'm assuming that's like temperature or That's temperature opener? control, correct. Okay, and did this have air conditioning? Option but didn't. The option but didn't, okay. And then of course you would have had um, an AM radio? Correct. And that's the actual radio that came with Correct. the car. I, mean, I know I shouldn't keep asking this because you told me it's original, <laughs> but I've got to ask because it's just, yeah. I mean, to find something like this, original, original, yeah. original, original, <laughs> wow. Um, so it had, uh, would have been like two little speakers plus some vents for your defroster. Correct. What's, what's interesting is the, the defrosting vents are in the center. They're just little round <laughs> holes. And then you got this whole windshield to, 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 <laughs> to defrost. But it doesn't see the winter anyway, so. No. All right. One of the other things that you notice is your rear view mirror. Correct. Is that, that actually, you did, that's not an add-on. No, no, no. That's the way they did that's it That's the that way time. it came. They attached Correct. it to the dashboard. Wow. Now, that's unusual. <laughs> huh. Now, the seats, uh, they are split in the front? No. That's a bench seat. Okay. But it's power seat. It is a power, and then you could fold Correct. either side to get in. That is right. Okay. And so it was power. So the axle seat was power, but not the windows. Correct. And then in the very back here, did this have a center armrest that pulled nope. out? That was just nope. designed to Oh, I'm like sorry. It. No. Yes, it does. That is, okay. a, that is a pull-down armrest. All right. And then, of course, you had the little, what do you call a hat, a hat shelf back there? Yes. Okay, and then one tiny little defroster again for the rear window. Yep. Ah, well, you know what? Let's let, let's talk about this roof because that's one of the unique features about this car. So tell tell us about the roof. Well, it appears that you have two roofs here, but this target design actually the strip comes across on it, which gives you. Uh, I call it targa, and I think that's what they called it. It was a targa strip, which gave it a nice break in its line. Uh, See, so it broke up straight lines. And it, and it stands out the minute you walk up to the car. Yes. You see it immediately. And it does create that nice bump there and yeah. the nice lines. All right, let's walk around to the back. Okay, so in the rear here, uh, first of all, of course, you got the, the imperial name written in nice, bold cursive. Yeah. And then you have these, uh, what do you call it, gunner sights, uh, taillights. Mm -hmm. Yep. Those are fantastic. I mean, just, look, just look at all that artwork, you know. Uh, and then the, those little reflectors, that was actually <laughs> yeah. yes. what was on the car. I almost thought for a minute those were an add-on, but no. well, that's what yeah. that's what came with the car. And then, of course, you have the, the what we think is the Eagle emblem replicated in the yep. fake uh, spare wheel. Some up. called a toilet seat. A toilet seat. <laughs> well, I can see why. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to sit there very long, but, uh, and then uh, we won't open the trunk, but I mean, the trunk is massive. Yes. This is like a six Jimmy Hoffa trunk, <laughs> you, depending on which way you hold them. Um, wow. And then, of course, you got this huge, massive chrome bumper. And then, you know, the, I mean, the, the backup lights were big, but look at all that extra real estate. And they still curved it out and made it look nice. I mean, that's just, wow. That is a lot of, a lot of real estate. I love the curved glass in the back windshield from this angle. That was the first year. And then, you know, you can still see that, what you referred to as a target strip. Yep. So, I mean, from almost any angle, you could spot that on the car, mm -hmm. which which is interesting. But, um, man, and then the slope lines, 
that come down. I, I, I bet you hope that you don't lose anything in the front of that <laughs> trunk. You'll, you'd spend a year <laughs> crawling to it to get it. Um, of course, your gas filler cap on the left. Um, and then, um, and again, this was a fake Correct. spare tire. It was just a look Correct. that they had. Although, I got to say, for the size of the trunk, it fit really well, right? <laughs> it took up a lot of space. Okay, let's, uh, let's come over to this side over here. Now, the hubcaps here, we, I guess we can see them better yep. up here, but these, these are the hubcaps. They are original. The yep. And, yeah, you can, you can tell it's got the little pitting right on the, yep. on the center on the chrome. part of it. Correct. The tires would have been white wall. Correct. So they would have Wide looked whites. like this. You just oh, have yeah. radials instead of the bias block. Okay. So, sometimes we have a hobby by ourselves, and it's just our hobby, and sometimes our family's involved, or our friends are. So, is your family involved in your hobby at all? Do they enjoy riding in the cars? Or? Well, they all like the cars. Let's put it that way there. But my boys, uh, unfortunately, well, I shouldn't say unfortunately, they're into the Porsches. Okay, they're, they're into new cars. Correct. They're, right. Speed, okay. speed and new speed, cars. Speed and new cars. But it's a love of cars that, that they obviously have got part Correct. of that from you. I hope. Right? <laughs> Not, I mean... Yeah. You you like older cars, they like new cars, but that is right. A car is a car, and that love uh -huh. for that comes. Yeah, so I, I if, as a dad, I'd feel pretty proud. <laughs> that that's pretty awesome. And this way, if you ever need a ride, you know who you can call and you get there really <laughs> fast, right? Yep. Okay. Yes. Now you've owned a number of cars, mm -hmm. so if if you if one of your sons was going to start collecting classical cars, right? What's one piece of advice you would give them based on your experience like you know don't ever buy a car on the internet without looking at it first or I mean what what kind of advice would you give a new new uh, classic car collector buy it all restored okay no surprises then that is right restoring that I, I don't think everyone realizes how utterly oh. expensive that is especially if you have it well done Yep. And we've talked to several owners who've had to take their car to several different shops, to correct just it. trying yeah. to get one thing done right. Yep. And then and then it's money spent, and that's hard. Correct. So okay, coming up the front here, you know, I just noticed from this side, you know, the the aviation yes look the point to yes the mirror. I mean, that is just all that detail just just for a mirror. Yep. Okay, well, Bob, you know, what's one of your favorite memories? with this car probably seeing it come off the trailer uh, I had it brought up in an enclosed trailer and it was exactly the way it was supposed to be so he there were no secrets to it so that, that's always nice yeah. when you get something like that and it yeah. comes out the way you think it is yeah well Bob thank you so much for sharing the story of this beautiful rare car uh, and and your story with us what well, thank you thanks for watching